Good morning again. Welcome back to New Center's Political Brew. We're here with Phil Harriman and John Richardson, and today we're focusing on the legacy of Governor Paul LePage, whose term expires in just a few days when Janet Mills takes over. Uh, we talked a little an hour ago about the tone of the LePage years, including the constant battles with the legislature, and even when it was his own party in charge. Uh, that included his, a pattern of refusing to allow his department heads to appear before legislative committees to, uh, to talk about whatever policies they were trying to enact. Uh, John, was this a useful strategy for the governor? Did it pay dividends for him? It didn't. It really set him back. Uh, unfortunately for him, the people, these commissioners, and I, having been a commissioner, understand how important it is to be that person who provides uh, all kinds of information to the committee of jurisdiction. It is their job to be oversight, an oversight of the department, and they can't effectively do their job, the legislature, if they aren't getting the proper information. So when a commissioner is not sitting there, when you're not getting that kind of information, that really is uh, very difficult for an oversight committee. And at times he would come down and he would speak himself uh, in front of committees. Oftentimes in error, he would make comments that are either in error or he failed to follow through. So it lo he lost credibility with the legislature, unfortunately, and I think it set him back by not having commissioners come down to speak. I think he set a tone for legislators and the administration to understand that each of them have a very difficult job. And, and I, I, I defend Governor LePage for his decision to withhold some of the commissioners from hearings because legislators just browbeat them uh, to embarrassment at times over policies that he, Governor Paul LePage, was asking his commissioners to, uh, to implement. And I think that's why, to John's point, Governor LePage at times would sit in front of these committees and say, I'm not gonna let you barrage my commissioners. You wanna talk about my policies? Talk to me. By the same token, uh, the media was a convenient punching bag for the governor ever since he took office. Uh, but did the, did the public somehow lose out if they're not seeing and hearing from the governor himself when he keeps the media at arm's length? Well, I think uh, I'm going to be a little perhaps biased in my response. I think the governor looked at the, the television media, um, in particular Don Kerrigan, in a way that was he knew he was doing a job and he was just trying to get the facts. I think as it related to the print media, he felt as though there was always a, a gutcha mentality. Uh, I remember he playfully said at uh, uh, one of the military defense companies down in Saco, I think it was Pratt Whitney, and they were showing some simulated uh, device they had made, and he jokingly said, you know, uh, maybe I can take out the Portland Press Herald, and that became the news story. And he's like, wait, with that, I'm just trying to be, you know, humorous, and you've taken it as a reason to be partisan. I don't think his relationship with the print media was anything like it was with the news uh, station media. John? I, I, th I wish that Representative Drew Coutine thought it was as funny as, you know, uh, taking out the Portland Press Herald. There were times where he was just completely inappropriate. But what I do think is he missed his opportunity to explain to the main people and using the, the, the power of the press to do so why I'm doing what I'm doing and what is the connection between what I'm doing and the benefit that Maine will receive. I think he missed out on many opportunities to do that. He picked fights unnecessarily, and that was unfortunate for him and, and for the state and, and the people that live in it. Welfare reform has been a hallmark of the LePage administration for the last eight years. Uh, as you look in general at the overall reforms that have been made, John, better or worse for Maine? I think slightly worse. I think that unfortunately the Medicaid expansion is what comes to mind for me. Uh, 50 million out of a $6 billion budget, less than 1% of our budget. We could have had $500 million that would have come in from the federal government to go ahead and provide health care for a lot of people that are in need of it. Do I give him credit for trying to pare back? Yes, I think that anyone who was going to be governor when he became governor had to go ahead and cut back some of the social services because our incomes weren't keeping pace. I just think he liked doing it too much. It wasn't enough regret in it. And when he had a chance to go ahead and fund services for people with the Medicaid expansion, he wouldn't do it. Are we better off? Or worse we, are, off? we are better off. And I think about the people who need a helping hand from our welfare system. It was before Paul LePage, you could use your welfare benefits to get tattoos and go to casinos and buy liquor and so forth. It took him almost two yeah, terms to get that out of the welfare expense uh, system. He said on Medicaid expansion, show me how we're going to pay for it. And the legislature never came through with the funding, yet he's you know, criticized for not implementing it. And most especially, I think Paula Page is really disappointed in the legislature because they didn't deal with the people with mental illness and, and people who need long-term care who are on a waiting list. My, my only 
point about that, and I do agree with a lot of what you just said, Phil, but you know, if we were going to go ahead and reduce down the income tax by 1%, Paula Page would have found the money. That we were trying to put health care on the table and give it an expansion, he just all of a sudden now couldn't find less than 1% out of a budget. That, I think, will be his legacy. And you bring up the income tax, and he targeted that early on, uh, first with a reduction and then proposing eliminating it. No one else really got on board. But do you think, Phil, what, what, did he do something that perhaps puts the seed in the heads of Mainers going forward that says, gee, our income tax is too high, we should do something about I, it? I, I do think he has done that. There, we talked about the property tax rising, and his, his response to that was, you look at all of the land that's been taken off the local property tax rolls, that's part of the reason that uh, property taxes are rising. As it relates to the income tax, what he tried to say is we need to attract people who want to come and build their careers and their families here, and if we can eliminate the income tax and raise the sales tax accordingly, we can get there. He couldn't build support in the legislature to get that done, but I do think the issue is not going to go away. Maine's income taxes are too high. I do think he brought uh, you know, attention to the issue, and I think he was right to a certain extent. To eliminate it, I don't think was something that even the Republicans in the House and Senate would support, but to reduce it down and do it thoughtfully over time, I think is something that uh, he was trying, attempted to do, and I think a lot of his division and politics of division things got in the way. In other words, emotions got in the way between what he thought was good policy and what he could accomplish in the legislature because there wasn't anybody he wouldn't fight with. And that, I think, is why he ultimately did not get income tax relief. Well, finally, this is tough to do to sum up when you're this close to it because we're still at the tail end of the LePage years. John, uh, I'll start with you. What do you think is Paul LePage's lasting legacy uh, for the state of Maine? I think it is that he did it his way. Uh, he was uh, a real strong chief executive. I think he actually expanded the role of the chief executive here, uh, one that if other future chief executives follow, they'll find they have much more power and much more ability to make change. I think that's, for me, what Paul LePage was all about, was expanding the authority of the chief executive. Yes, he sometimes lost, sometimes won, but he was always moving to expand uh, his power base. I, I think the governor should be proud of the legacy he's left with the judicial appointments that he made throughout his eight years as governor. I think uh, he demonstrated that courage of your conviction and your principles matter. But most especially, I think he will go down as an inspiration to anyone from whatever background they come from, that you too can grow up and become the governor of the state of Maine. All right, Phil, John, thanks very much. Wish you a happy new year. We'll Thank see you, you not only in the new year, but in the new administration. We'll see you there as well. New Center's back after this.